Imagine a battery that turns salty seawater into fresh drinking water while it charges. On October 19, 2025, researchers at the University of Surrey announced exactly that. A sodium ion battery that simultaneously removes salt from seawater while storing energy. With 2 billion people facing water scarcity and soaring energy demands, this breakthrough could change everything. Sodium ion batteries began in the 1970s alongside lithium ion batteries, but by the 1990s, lithium ion won commercial favor and sodium ion research stopped. Fast forward to the 2010s, lithium prices climbed dramatically. Lithium is rare, expensive, concentrated in few countries and mining it damages the environment. Sodium is Earth's sixth most abundant element and the fourth most abundant in the ocean. You can extract it from seawater or common salt. Sodium is nearly 50 times cheaper than lithium. By 2022, Cartel announced mass production of sodium ion batteries. In 2023, Chinese company Hyena installed the first sodium ion battery in an electric car. But sodium ion batteries still could not match lithium ion energy density. That is where our breakthrough begins. Meet Dr. Daniel Commander, a research fellow at the University of Surrey's School of Chemistry and Chemical Engineering. He completed his PhD in 2020, then worked on lithium ion battery materials. The dependence on critical materials, safety concerns, and poor sustainability bothered him. In 2023, he won a Surrey Future Fellowship to research sustainable battery technology, focusing on water-based electrolytes with sodium ion chemistry. The material at the heart of this breakthrough is NVOH, which stands for nanostructured sodium vanadate hydrate. NVOH is a compound of sodium, vanadium, oxygen, and water molecules. For decades, researchers heat-treated this material to remove water, believing water causes battery problems. Dr. Commander asked, what if keeping the water actually helps? His team tested the hydrated NVOH without removing water. The results shocked everyone. The wet version stored almost twice as much charge as typical sodium ion materials. It charged faster and remained stable for over 400 cycles, matching or beating many lithium ion cathodes. Then came the remarkable discovery. Testing the material in salt water, they found it not only kept working but started removing salt. The NVOH electrode extracted sodium ions while a graphite electrode extracted chloride ions creating fresh water. A battery that stores energy and purifies water simultaneously had been born. How does this work? Every battery has three parts, a cathode which is the positive electrode, an anode which is the negative electrode, and an electrolyte that allows ions to move between them. When you charge a battery, ions move from cathode to anode, storing energy. When you use it, they flow back, releasing energy. In this battery, the cathode is NVOH with water in its structure. Water molecules widen the spaces between atomic layers, letting sodium ions move in and out easily, like wider highway lanes allowing more traffic. This is why the hydrated version stores nearly double the charge. The battery delivered 280 million per hour per gram at low current rates. After 400 cycles, it maintained over 100 milliampere hours per gram. Now, the desalination function. When salt dissolves in water, it breaks into sodium ions with positive charge and chloride ions with negative charge. In the setup, the NVOH cathode sits in salty water with a graphite anode. When electricity is applied, the NVOH pulls sodium ions from water and stores them in its layered structure. The graphite anode captures chloride ions. With both removed, water becomes desalinated. The team confirmed no dangerous gases were produced. This electrochemical desalination happens while the battery stores energy. Traditional reverse osmosis requires 3 to 10 kilowatt hours per cubic meter of water. Desalination batteries use around 0.5 kilowatt hours per cubic meter while generating power. The team built a full battery cell delivering 70 mAh per gram at practical current rates. What does this mean practically? First, renewable energy storage. Solar panels only work when the sun shines. Wind turbines only work when wind blows. Most grid storage uses expensive lithium ion batteries. Sodium ion batteries with NVOH could cost a fraction of lithium ion systems because sodium is abundant and cheap, making renewable energy storage affordable enough to replace fossil fuel plants worldwide. Second, the water crisis. Two billion people face water scarcity. 
Current desalination plants are expensive, energy intensive, and produce concentrated brine waste harming marine life. Imagine a system using seawater as both desalination source and battery electrolyte. Solar panels power the battery, which stores energy and produces fresh water simultaneously. Bringing electricity and clean water to remote coastal areas, small islands, developing nations, and disaster zones. For transportation, Chinese company Yadia already sells electric scooters with sodium ion batteries. While not matching lithium ion energy density for long range cars, they suit shorter range vehicles, buses, and urban transport. For stationary applications like backup power, industrial equipment, and grid storage, sodium ion batteries with NVOH could dominate. Production simplicity is another advantage. Skipping the heat treatment to remove water saves energy and time, making batteries cheaper and faster to produce at scale. Now, the challenges. First, energy density. Sodium ion batteries lag behind lithium ion. For the same stored energy, sodium ion will be heavier or bulkier, limiting long range vehicles and portable electronics. Second, long term stability. Dr. Commander's team shows stability over 400 cycles, but commercial batteries need thousands. Some sodium ion designs show rapid capacity fade. Water in NVOH, while beneficial for performance, could cause long term degradation. Third, vanadium extraction has environmental impacts, habitat destruction, soil erosion, and water contamination. Mining generates waste with heavy metals and chemicals. If mismanaged, these leak into waterways, harming aquatic life. Vanadium is toxic in high concentrations. Scaling production to supply millions of batteries could create new environmental challenges. Fourth, scaling from laboratory to commercial production. Dr. Commander's team worked with small batches. Producing tons of NVOH consistently is harder. Scaling from 1 gram to 10 grams worked well, but 25 grams showed quality inconsistencies. Some batches had wrong compositions, affecting performance. Building supply chains requires coordination between raw material suppliers, component manufacturers, and battery assemblers. Fifth, desalination environmental concerns. Traditional desalination produces brine, highly concentrated salt water. When dumped in oceans, brine sinks and creates dead zones where marine organisms cannot survive. Desalination batteries also produce concentrated salt. What do you do with extracted salt? Proper disposal or reuse strategies need development. Sixth, desalination batteries still require energy input. That energy must come from renewable sources or you just shift the environmental problem. Seventh, safety. Although sodium ion batteries are generally safer, both types often use flammable organic electrolytes with fire risks. Lithium ion batteries experience thermal runaway where heat causes chain reactions leading to fires or explosions, sodium ion batteries typically do not experience thermal runaway. More research is needed on aqueous electrolyte safety in large-scale installations. Finally, market challenges. Lithium ion batteries have massive economies of scale, established supply chains, and decades of optimization. Convincing industries to switch requires proven reliability and significant investment in new production facilities. The battery that desalinates seawater while storing power is here. While challenges remain from scaling to environmental impacts, the potential is undeniable. As research continues, we may soon see these batteries worldwide. So that's it. For daily quizzes, join my WhatsApp channel. Link is in the pinned comment. Uh, before you go, a quiz question. What does NVOH stand for? Option A, nanostructured vanadium oxide hydride. Option B, sodium vanadate oxide hexahydrate. Option C, nanostructured sodium vanadate hydrate. Option D, nickel vanadium oxygen hydroxide. Drop your answer in the comments. If you found this helpful, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell icon. Share this video with friends who care about clean energy and water security. Consider becoming a member for exclusive content. Thank you for watching.